midnight dreary. Jacob had always been an outsider at school, a shy and awkward teen who yearned for acceptance. He lived in the shadow of the popular kids, especially Isabella, the girl he secretly admired from afar. With his 16th birthday approaching, he saw an opportunity to change his status. He decided to throw a birthday party, inviting everyone from school, hoping that maybe, just maybe, the cool kids would attend and he could finally be one of them. The days leading up to the party were a mix of excitement and anxiety. Jacob meticulously planned every detail, from the decorations to the snacks, all in the hope of impressing his peers. He even mustered the courage to approach Isabella and invite her personally. She gave him a polite but distant smile, agreeing to attend without much enthusiasm. The day of the party arrived, and Jacob's heart raced with anticipation. The decorations adorned his modest home, and the table was laden with snacks and cake. It was one of those birthday cakes that is also topped with another layer of cupcakes. And he had enough extra cupcakes for every guest and lit a single candle on each one. It was definitely a fire hazard with all the cheap paper decorations and helium-filled balloons everywhere, but that didn't matter to Jacob. Only one thing mattered to Jacob. Isabella. As the clock ticked closer to the party start time, he anxiously awaited the arrival of his guests. One by one, the guests trickled in. Jacob's eyes darted around the room, searching for Isabella among the sea of unfamiliar faces. But as time passed, his hope waned, and the sinking feeling of rejection settled in his stomach. As the night wore on, it became apparent that the popular kids, including Isabella, had not shown up. Jacob's party was attended mostly by those who shared his status as outsiders, kids who had been invited out of pity or a sense of obligation. Jacob felt the eyes of his guests on him, and the weight of his unfulfilled expectations began to crush him. But suddenly, there was a knock at the door. One of the nearby guests opened it, and in walked Isabella trailed by a group of her female suck-ups and a bunch of the sportos. They were obnoxious and immediately started making themselves at home and disturbing the other guests. In a desperate bid to break the ice and fit in, Jacob approached the newly arrived revelers, trying to strike up a conversation. But as soon as he opened his mouth, he was met with laughter and mockery. The cool kids at the party were relentless in their cruelty. Dork. Loser. Fag. Did I say you could talk to me, you fucking little worm? Yeah, who invited the incel? They didn't even recognize Jacob or know that it was his birthday party. Jacob's face turned beet red as he tried to stammer out a response, but the insults continued to rain down upon him. Isabella, standing at a distance, couldn't resist joining in on the humiliation. She approached Jacob with a cruel smirk on her face, looking him up and down. You really thought I'd be friends with you? You're such an ugly monster. The words hit Jacob like a midnight meat train, cutting through his fragile self-esteem like a knife. Tears welled up in his eyes, but he refused to let them fall. He had invited these people into his home, hoping for friendship, and all he received was scorn and ridicule. Deep beneath the earth's surface, in the dark depths of his subterranean sepulcher, the thonic god Sathagwa sensed Jacob's pain. An ancient and malevolent deity, Sathagwa reveled in the suffering of mortals. He had long awaited for the right opportunity to intervene in the affairs of the surface world, and Jacob's despair was the perfect present for the petulant Plutonian pus pod bod god. With a sinister chuckle, Sathagwa reached out from his abyssal realm and cast his dark blessing upon Jacob. The transformation was swift and brutal. 
Jacob's body contorted and shifted, bones snapping and muscles twisting as he was reshaped into a true monster. His skin turned ashen gray, and his limbs elongated into grotesque proportions. His belly was bloated like a bowl full of janky jelly made from horse piss and dead wishes. His eyes glowed with malevolent energy, and he grew elongated jaws with terrible teeth that bite and calamitous claws that catch. In a matter of moments, Jacob had become the very embodiment of the monstrous form his tormentors had accused him of being. The party had taken a nightmarish turn. Jacob, now a monstrous being, roared with a newfound strength, his anger and pain unleashed in a terrible torrent. He lunged at his tormentors with inhuman speed, sending them scrambling and screaming in terror. The cool kids who had harassed him only moments before were now helpless victims of a vengeful force they couldn't comprehend. Jacob's monstrous form struck fear into their hearts as he tore through the room, exacting his revenge. Tables were overturned, decorations torn asunder, and the screams of his former guests filled the air. Isabella, who had taunted him so mercilessly, was cornered by Jacob, her wide eyes filled with terror. She pleaded for mercy, but it fell on deaf ears. Jacob, filled with a primal rage, unleashed a horrific roar and lunged at her, his fangs sinking into her flesh. The chaos continued as Jacob attacked the rest of the guests, his monstrous form an instrument of retribution. The once joyous occasion had become a nightmarish scene of blood and cake. When it was all over, Jacob sat alone in the center of the ruined room, a party hat still perched awkwardly on his monstrous head. The room was filled with the stench of fear and despair, and the anguished cries of his former tormentors had been silenced. Despite the satisfaction of his revenge, Jacob was overwhelmed by a crushing loneliness. The curse had severed him from humanity, leaving him a monster in body and soul. The desire for acceptance that had driven him to throw the ill-fated party had led to his transformation into the very thing he had feared. As he sat amidst the wreckage, Jacob couldn't help but reflect on the events of the evening. With a heavy heart, he muttered, Worst birthday ever.